40s Schmorties. Was he the best quarterback in the league in week one? I made that word up. We caught a glimpse of Justin Fields Sunday night. Would the Bears be making a big mistake sticking with Andy Dalton over the rookie in week two? And at last check, it was Wednesday, which means Nick and the committee have oh, new NFL tears for yeah. us. Good morning, yeah. everyone. Welcome to a fantastic edition of First Things First alongside Nick and Broussard and my guy Kevin Wilds. I'm Jenna Wolf. All right, Nick, yes. who will be writing the angriest letter to you in the committee this morning? Who? I got to hear. Well, actually, you know what? The committee is going to write me a letter angry that you guys keep glossing this as Nick's tears. It is a collaborative effort. The committee deserves credit. Can we please adjust that to the committee's Honestly. week two NFL tears? That's in the on future? us. Please. That's on us, Nick. That is, you're, you're right. That is on us. It will not happen again. So we will get to all that right letter Thanks, writing Jim. and committees in a second. First, we start with number 12, Aaron Rodgers. Coming off just a, a brutal season opening blowout loss to the Saints. The reigning MVP only managed 133 passing yards. Tossed two picks. Rodgers sat down for his weekly appearance on the Pat McAfee show yesterday. Waxed poetic about the team's disastrous week one showing. Take a listen. Is there any reason for any Packers fans to think anything differently or worry about anything? You have the utmost confidence in this team, this roster, and yourself still, right? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's that's uh, that's why I'm back. You know, I love this, uh, love the team. Feel good about everything that we've done in the off season, uh, training camp. You know, I felt like uh, you know it was solid. We had good practices. I know that you know a game like that allows all these speculation to come into play. Should we have played in the preseason? You know, should we have done this? Should we have done that? And we got to deal with it because we just got our asses whooped. That's fine, you know. But, you know, what's going to happen down the line is going to happen. And we know how this thing goes. It's a cycle. And right now we're taking on the chin, which we should. And pretty soon it'll be flipped. So, uh, hell yeah. But me, per I'm, me personally, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, I'm, I'm confident and, and happy and excited and, and love these guys. Competitor, like I said, frustrated about my performance and our performance. But uh, this game is uh, is about how you respond to negativity, usually more than uh, how you're uh, hailed for your successes. The old high camera mount in Aaron Rodgers' house. So, Nick, you heard what Aaron Rodgers <laughs> had to say. What did you make of how he looked back on the game? <laughs> Yeah, listen, his comments are fine. I, he didn't say anything incendiary. He didn't say anything particularly insightful. Those are, you know, it, what's the word? Pa pablum, I think is what Broussard would call it. Just regular, you know, expected <laughs> comments. In fully pressurized on Rodgers about how he plays and how the team responds. Not so much Monday, but in the weeks that follow. Listen, they're going to beat the Lions because if there's one thing we know about the Packers and the Lions is they play twice a year and Green Bay whoops them every single time. So we know they will. that is their early season bye. We know they'll win that game. But then after that, they have two teams that are feeling great right now. Two teams whose defenses are feeling great right now with the exception of maybe a couple minutes at the end of week one in San Francisco and Pittsburgh. And Rodgers' trump card all offseason and in every media uh, availability he had, Broussard, was he always threw in there, or very often threw in there. Yeah, and I mean, you know, they draft my replacement, and, you know, I went out and I, you know, I won league MVP. And so I thought maybe I'd get a contract <laughs> extension. And so, uh, you know, they, the, the, you know, after the year we had where, you know, I thought I played re really well, I thought it was one of the better years of my career, I thought I'd get, you know, a contract extension. But that doesn't play when you were the worst quarterback in the league this week. And so he now has an added level of pressure on himself that if, they fall to the Niners, who knocked him out of the NFC Championship game a couple years ago. Or if they fall to the Steelers, 
or God forbid if they lose both of those games and they're one and three, the noise is going to become deafening. And so I do think his yes. comments were totally fine, Broussard, but I think he now has an extra level of pressure that he and the team must play excellent over the rest of September in order to really quiet it and say, hey, you know who else lost to the Saints 38-3 to last year? Tampa Bay. How'd that end up for them? They won the Super Bowl. They can flip it into that, but they need to win weeks three and four to do that. Well, I agree with you, Nick, about Aaron's comments. Like, I think they were right on the money. If I'm coming off a bad loss, I want my leader to say, hey, it's just week one, we'll be fine. It's early, okay? I want him to say, we've got to learn from this loss, and we will learn from this loss. I want him to say those types of things. Like, we'll show what we're made of by how we respond to this adversity. So I'm here for all of that. But, guys, I've been married for more than a quarter of a century. Yes, I said it. And in my 26 wow. years of marriage, I have learned <laughs> that it is not always what you say, but it's how you say it. And look, Take I'm getting well. tired of that. Aaron Rodgers is just too cool. He's too calm. Oh He's my too gosh. unbothered. He oh. is. I'm sorry. Look, and I'm not just saying that. I'm not saying this just based on. On Let me just buy you a drink. The calm guy, Broussard, <laughs> is the most dangerous guy out there. And that's what Aaron Rodgers is. To me, it wasn't the fact that he was lackadaisical. It was the fact that he had so much confidence in himself. He was like, yeah, we're ready to go. So I don't need any more energy from him. And I'm going to re also reject one of Nick's points. Nick said uh -oh. he called Aaron Rodgers' comments pablum. I'm like, buddy, you are way off, perhaps one of your worst takes ever, because we got the answer to why Aaron Rodgers threw his red zone interception. We already got the old one-two <laughs> shot, the old double jeopardy downtown. So that's why he got a little bit thrown <laughs> off. He said he used to wear a cup when he was a child. He decided not to wear a cup anymore in football, and that's the reason he threw the interception. So the fact that that won't happen ever again, because I don't think that anyone will, you know, I think that's just a bad coincidence for Aaron Rodgers. It wasn't Pavlum, and he was super <laughs> calm, and I loved it. Thought it was great. Yeah, okay. I, I'm i not sure what the justification is for then the second interception. <laughs> Folks are allowed to have bad football games. But I just yeah. want to ask Broussard a question. Broussard, but for Rodgers to do what you're advocating for would be a total departure from the personality that he has shown forever. Do you, I mean, we remember, Agreed. God, it was at this point, what, six, seven years ago when they had the bad start and he had the famous R-E-L-A-X press conference, remember? Right. Told everyone, calm down, everyone relax, and that worked. So don't you think, like, while I agree last year he was ticked off and he was awesome, his previous best season ever was the 15-1 year when they were the defending Super Bowl champions. So he was the opposite of ticked off, and he had a spectacular season. So don't you think, like, at this point in his career, he is who he is? Like, what you're advocating for would be such a change in personality that it's unrealistic? He absolutely is who he is. All right, and he, he, this, but my point is this. I think this is an intangible that he lacks. I mean, you say negative, work. Huh? Okay. I say fall short. I say fall short. I mean, this is guy a guy that until Pat Mahomes, everybody thought was the best to ever throw the football. Why hasn't he been to a Super Bowl with a pretty good team in 10 or 11 years? I'm just saying when it gets to those big moments, that's when the little things show up. And I think the team needs to see right. a little more injury. I don't want him going crazy. Don't get wild. But just speak with a little more fire, a little more urgency, all right? And that's all I'm asking for. And Wilds, I, I get he's into the mental health space now and all that. That's great for life. But when it comes to football, sometimes you got to be a little bit different. We know a lot of our great athletes are one way off the field, but another way on the field when you step in those lines. So I, I just want to see a little more.